everybody. Welcome to Strumming with Christopher. I'm Christopher Gallegos, librarian for Gonzales Branch, Monterey County Free Libraries. Thank you all so much for tuning in to the second episode of Strumming with Christopher. So last time we talked about tuning our guitar. So if you recall, tuning a guitar is the way that you, uh, the pitch that you want all your six strings on your guitar to have. And it's important that you're tuned up before you start playing every time. It's, it's like something you do if you uh, go to your car and you give your tires a kick and you make sure the doors are all locked and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just something you start with. I, I'll give you a quick little story. When I started playing guitar, I got this electric guitar and distortion and I was trying to play metal and all this other stuff. And um, for about a month and a half, I figured some stuff out on my own and then I realized the guitar was not in tune and everything I learned when I learned how to tune a guitar it didn't work anymore because the strings were, it was just different. So you want to start by tuning your guitar. So if you recall real quick, the strings are E, A, D, G, B, E. So the top one is E, A, D, G, minor chord last time. So if you recall, E minor chord was the one, I'm going to get a little close here, uh, E minor was the one where you had your pointer finger on the second fret on the fifth string, so you go down one string from the thickest, and you have your index finger pressing that, and then you make room for your middle finger, and that's right below it, so they're both on the second fret, pointer finger on the A string, second fret, middle finger on the D string, second fret. And then remember, you're playing. You don't worry about strumming yet. Just play however you want with your uh, right hand. You're going to get that nice, that nice uh, E minor chord. So I don't generally play it like this with the two fingers, but just for, for the sake of learning a good habit and a chord transition, I'm doing it that way because we're going to learn two more chords today. We're going to learn a G chord and a D chord. Now, there's a lot of times where people will teach a G chord, and they will, um, they'll tend to leave the pinky and the, the ring finger out of it, and I don't like how that sounds. I think it's cheating. So, look, you have your E minor chord here, and then you switch to the G with nothing on the bottom, and it just sounds kind of... It sounds pleasant enough, right? But I want to teach you guys the, the real G chord and the real D chord. So it's going to be a little bit more, you'll have to practice, but it, it's, you know, it's good to have good habits early. So remember, you're starting out uh, with your thumb on the back. Try to keep it toward the middle as you're learning, kind of like a pinch grip type thing. And don't grip too hard or your hand will cramp, but it's just kind of a support for you. And so we have our E minor. We start there, right? And the next chord I'm going to teach you, and you can do these shapes individually as you're learning. Don't worry about transitioning yet. We'll get there, but... You just want to start learning the shapes. The next chord is a G chord that we're going to learn today, okay? So the transition, at least these top two strings, starts pretty easily, okay? So what you're going to do is you're actually going to just move your middle finger off that second fret on the D string, okay? And you're going to move it up to the third fret on the low E, okay? So you're going to have top down, middle finger, it's just a shifting of one finger at first, right? So you have your, say we're starting from an E minor position as you're learning. You move that middle finger, you leave the, um, the pointer finger on the A string, second fret. You move that middle finger up to the third fret on the low E string, okay? And then you have that open, you can do that too, but we're gonna do the whole shebang here, okay? So then you're going to take your ring finger and your pinky, okay, and it's going to be a little trickier to see this, but you're going to put them both, you're going to put your pinky on the high E, so the very, very first string at the bottom, and you're going to put your uh, ring finger on the third fret on the B, okay, so it's going to kind of look, it's hard to see it all at once. You're going to have your bottom fingers doing this, okay, so they'll both be on the same fret on the third fret, pinky, high E, ring finger on... Uh, on the B, and kind of like with the E minor chord, you can't really stack them on top of each other unless you're a superhuman, so you might have them a little off-center as long as you're not touching the metal wires, okay? 
Um, so that's what it looks like. But uh, you're gonna have four fingers in use for this G chord. Okay, so that's why uh, it's a little trickier at first. But let's just say you're starting from the E minor position, just to make it easier, okay? You're starting from that E minor position, right? And then move your middle finger to the uh, third fret on the low E, and then make sure your pinky and your ring finger are down on the third fret, pinky on the high E, and ring finger on the B string. So really, a good way of thinking about it is your pinky, your ring finger, and your middle finger, so your last three fingers, are all going to be on the third fret, just on different strings, okay? So pinky, high E, ring finger, B string, which is the second string up. Your middle finger will be on the, uh, the thickest string on the top, third fret, and then your pointer finger is going to remain on the second fret on the A. So that seems like a lot, but listen to how it sounds. <laughs> So then we have our E minor, and don't worry about this yet, but say you're going to transition from your G chord back to an E minor, it's a matter of just moving your middle finger back to the um, D string, so back one, and then taking your pinky and your ring off, transition to a G. Okay, so that's something to practice a little bit. And then we're going to get to a D chord, which is a different kind of chord. So this D chord, you're not going to be able to play all six strings. You're going to have to learn a little bit of uh, a little bit of control as you're going along to not just strum wildly. With an E minor and a G, you can play six strings. But with a D, it's it's down here. So the D will only actually use four strings. So it'll be the high E, the B, the G, and the D. And you're going to start with your um, with your pointer and your middle finger again, and you're going to put your index finger up on the third fret. Uh, sorry, on the second fret, third string. Okay, so that's the G string, and you have that index finger there. Remember, use the tip of your finger if you can. Think of a piano, the way it has little hammers, and then you get your middle finger and you skip this B string in the middle, and you go down to the second fret on the high E. Okay. And then you finally, you can use either your pinky or your ring. I tend to use my pinky, but there's no wrong way. But we'll just say your ring just because you're learning. So your ring finger is going to go over on the B string to the third fret, okay? So middle finger, E string, high E string, second fret. And um, pointer finger, second fret on the G string, third string up and your ring finger on the third fret on the B, okay? It's D, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're only going to play the bottom four strings. You're not going to play these two thick ones on the top because it'll sound bad. And this open D string is kind of your bass note, okay? So it'll sound like this. three chords I'm not saying you have to learn how to combine them yet just get comfortable with the shapes sometimes you don't even have to strum just think about these shapes um, so you know our E minor we have our first shape we learned and then we have our G and then we have our D okay and just think about these shapes and go back in the video if you have to I know it's a lot but yeah those three chords once you learn that just kind of spend some time without even strumming just 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 kind of jumping from those shapes very very slowly right mm -hmm. and then just kind of find ways to start transitioning it'll take you a while but it'll give you some stuff to think about this week um and once you learn those three you can make some beautiful music i'll do one more quick example before we wrap up here <laughs> everybody thank you so much for your time and i'll see you next episode bye bye